In the original Dragon Ball Z story, Android 16 met his demise at the hands of Cell and served as the trigger behind Gohan's fateful Super Saiyan 2 transformation. After his death, the world moved forward and left 16 behind to be forgotten. But what if he actually survived the Cell games? How would his survival affect the story? How would he affect other characters? Today's What If is the sequel to my What If Goku Used Super Kaioken Against Cell video, so if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend going and checking it out so you won't be confused. But to catch you up to speed, instead of Android 16 dying in this timeline, it's actually Goku who caused Gohan to go Super Saiyan 2, having died during his battle with Cell after overexerting his body by using the Super Kaioken. Because Goku was the one to die, Android 16 got to survive and was present during that final battle, but just like the other Z Fighters, he wouldn't have been able to do much to help Gohan out, all he could do was watch. The fight between Gohan and Cell stays roughly the same in this timeline, except since Goku is already dead, Gohan is more bloodlusted than his original counterpart, and rather than wanting to make Cell suffer, he's wanting to kill him right from the get-go to avenge his father. As a result, Gohan never plays around and forces Cell to spit up Android 18, so he never reverts back to his semi-perfect form and is never forced to self-destruct. While this might be a good thing since King Kai's planet never gets destroyed and, by extension, the non-canon Bojack story can never happen, it also means that when Gohan finally erases Cell with his Kamehameha, both Androids 17 and 18 are killed alongside Cell, and the world is finally at peace from the threat of the Androids. Like normal, our heroes leave the battlefield and travel back to the lookout, but Android 16 is left behind, saddened that his two best friends were taken from him, and he never got the chance to even say goodbye. All he had left of them were those fond memories he had of driving around with 17 and 18, exploring the world and terrorizing people on their way to kill Goku. But now that both of them were gone after Cell's defeat, and with Goku being dead, it felt like 16 no longer had a purpose in life. For the first time in what felt like forever, he was free to do whatever he wanted, free to explore the world and to love its animals, but he didn't know where to start or who to follow. That's all he really knew up until this point, he only knew to do what he was told and to follow the guidance of other people, but now he was free to do his own thing, and he felt lost. Sixteen figured that there was no better place to start this new life than by thanking those that made it possible, so just before Gohan and the others were out of sight, Android 16 floated up into the sky and followed after them. At the lookout, Gohan gets healed by Dende and our hero summons Shenron to restore the lives of those that were killed by Cell. But of course, this wouldn't include Goku since he wasn't killed by Cell this time around. His death was self-inflicted. Because of this, Piccolo and the others aren't able to sense his energy after making the first wish, so they try making a second wish to bring Goku back, but as we all know, he doesn't want to come back to life. Like his main counterpart, Goku decides to stay dead so that he doesn't draw any more bad guys to Earth, and since Gohan managed to get even stronger than himself, they shouldn't have anything to worry about with him being gone. Goku tells everyone his goodbyes and tells Gohan that he's proud of just how strong he's become, and then just like that, Goku's voice vanishes as he goes off to train with King Kai for the next seven years. Android 16 arrives at the lookout around this time, silently watching our heroes from behind a pillar, just like what Android 18 did in the original timeline, and like normal, nobody senses him approaching because they can't sense his energy. He's amazed at the sight of Shenron, but he instantly notices that everybody else looks sad. He had no idea that they were saying their goodbyes to Goku. And speaking of which, now that they couldn't revive Goku, what would the second wish be? Everybody starts arguing over who gets the second wish, but while everyone debates about what they want, Krillin has a lingering thought in his head. Remembering how he couldn't protect Android 18 from being absorbed, now that Cell was gone, so was she. He felt a pain in his heart after remembering her face, and he felt guilty knowing that she might not ever get to experience life again, and it was all because he couldn't have done anything to help her. Krillin looks over at Piccolo and asks what he thinks happened to both the androids now that Cell was gone hoping to move on by having some sort of closure. But surprisingly, Piccolo says that he wouldn't be surprised if the two of them were actually brought back to life, since even if they were androids, they were still victims of Cell, so it's possible that they got a second chance at life. With a little bit of hope left inside, Krillin takes over the second wish and asks Shenron to remove the bombs inside of both 17 and 18's chest, just like what Dr. Briefs had done with 16, and after granting the wish, Shenron leaves and the Dragon Balls are dispersed. Everyone begins asking Krillin why he made the wish, even if the androids weren't alive, and Krillin explains that after getting to know Android 16, while he was getting repaired at Capsule Corp, he learned that none of the androids actually seemed to be bad people, so if there was a chance that they were alive, he wanted to do the right thing. 
Trunks adamantly denies the idea, but Krillin says that the androids in this timeline are nothing like the ones from the future. They didn't come across as monsters bent on destroying the world, they were just misguided, and at the end of the day, they were just victims that had their lives stolen from them, so if they really were brought back to life, it was the right thing to do to give them a peaceful life. Trunks still finds it hard to believe that these two androids were any different from those that were responsible for the death of future Gohan and everyone else that he cares about, but maybe Krillin was right. This timeline was already vastly different from the one that he came from, so there had to have been something that made it all change. There had to have been some sort of butterfly effect that made these androids act differently. Maybe it was Android 16's presence that ultimately calmed them down and made them realize that there was more to life than death and destruction. Now, after making that second wish, in the original series, this is when 18's relationship with Krillin truly takes off because she sees just how kind-hearted of a person he is, and as we all know, they eventually get married and have a daughter together. However, since she's not at the lookout in this timeline, she's not around to learn of Krillin's wish, but someone else is. After the wish, Sixteen smiles at Krillin's kindness, remembering how he was the only one who trusted him back when Eighteen was absorbed by Cell. Nobody else wanted to show Sixteen kindness, but Krillin was the one who stepped up and took him back to Capsule Corp for repairs, and now because of these wishes, Sixteen and his friends could live their lives in peace. He was able to go and reunite with his friends. Stepping out from behind a pillar, Android Sixteen reveals himself to Krillin and the others, catching everyone by surprise. Thanking Gohan and the others for their kindness and their bravery against Cell, he makes amends with our heroes for the mistakes that he and the other androids made, saying that he has a new outlook on life because of their actions. Everyone seems to forgive Sixteen aside from Trunks, who's still a bit hesitant on the idea of trusting an android, but regardless, Sixteen is now a newfound person and he says his goodbyes to Gohan, Krillin, and the others before leaving the lookout, ready to start his peaceful life with the brother and sister that he thought he had lost. Soon after, Sixteen went back to the battlefield where Cell was defeated and instantly discovered that Piccolo's hunch was right. Both Seventeen and Eighteen had been brought back to life and were standing right where Cell was defeated. The two were confused as to how they got there, and what happened since the last thing they really remember was getting absorbed. The two reunite with Sixteen, who catches them up to speed on what had happened, but more importantly, he explains to the two that the bombs in their chest were removed by a small guy named Krillin, who wanted them to live their lives peacefully, and that they owe it to him to do just that. Seventeen looks a bit confused and asks who this Krillin guy is, but Eighteen instantly remembers his face after hearing his name, remembering when the two first met and she kissed him on the cheek. She thinks back to how he hesitated to destroy the remote that would have detonated the bomb in her chest, and now, it looks like he actually went a step further and had it removed. With all these memories playing in her head, she starts realizing that maybe the short guy had a crush on her, but the others seem to be clueless. Seventeen asks why Krillin would have made the wish in the first place, and Sixteen doesn't really know, saying that maybe he didn't need to have a reason to be kind, and that they should follow that example. Eighteen agrees and says that since Goku's dead, none of them actually have a purpose anymore, so they should part ways and follow their own passions and desires. Seventeen likes the idea, and the two say their goodbyes to Sixteen before flying off into the sky, ready to explore the world at their own pace. But while the two of them left, Sixteen was left behind once again, looking back and forth wondering which one of the two he should follow. Just like how he felt when Cell was defeated, he felt as though he had lost Seventeen and Eighteen once again, but rather than being filled with sadness over them being dead, he was happy because they were alive and could do whatever they wanted. As he watched his friends fly off, he realized that he didn't need to follow after anybody anymore, and now that he was a free android, he could follow his own path and let Seventeen and Eighteen follow theirs. As the two androids completely disappear into the blue sky, Sixteen felt a newfound sense of purpose and looked down at the Capsule Corp logo on his chest. It was sloppily placed over the Red Ribbon Army logo, but looking at the logo made him feel a sense of pride, and ultimately, it represented him turning over a new leaf. He thought back to the times that he protected Seventeen and Eighteen from Cell, and even at the Cell games when Gohan was being brutally beat down, he wanted to jump in and save him. Of all the people in the world, he wanted to protect the son of Goku, the man he was programmed to kill. Sixteen's natural instinct to protect seemed to overpower the orders that were programmed into his mind, and after looking back at all these moments, Sixteen realized that he enjoyed helping and protecting people regardless of how he was told to act. 
Like how a human has control over their own emotions, 16 felt in control of his, and so maybe if he went back to Capsule Corp, he could do whatever he could to keep doing what he enjoyed, alongside Gohan and the other heroes. But first, he wanted to take in the world around him a bit more, getting to know its animals and people on his own accord. So for a while, that's exactly what 16 did. As the world slowly returned to peace after the defeat of Cell, 16 took some time to get a better understanding of the world around him and started to enjoy life as if he were human. Sometime later, after Trunks returned to the future, 16 would return to Capsule Corp to thank Bulma and Dr. Briefs for repairing him and his newfound eagerness in protecting life inspired Bulma to hire him on as a security officer. Because 16 didn't really have a need for money, he would provide his services for the company and would protect Bulma in exchange for future upgrades and a place to stay. For the next seven years, Android 16 would form a close friendship with Bulma, and by extension, he would have a lot more exposure to her friends and family, like Krillin, who I could 100% see trying to convince 16 to be his wingman whenever he starts going on dates with 18, the present version of Trunks, who he would probably become an uncle to, and especially Vegeta, who would undoubtedly use 16 as a sparring partner as often as he could. But without a doubt, the most interesting relationship that Android 16 forms is with Gohan. During the seven year time skip, Gohan would occasionally come to Capsule Corp so that his new little brother, Goten, could play with Trunks, and while there, Gohan would bump into 16. As the years went by and as Gohan grew older, the two would bond over their peaceful personalities, and it didn't take long for them to become close friends, closer than they ever were in the main timeline. The two would instantly bond over their love of nature, their life goals, and their purpose in life. And who knows, a lot can happen in seven years, so I wouldn't be surprised if Gohan was inspired by 16 to keep up on his training from time to time every time he brought Goten over for playtime with Trunks. Of course, he'd still want to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a scholar, so training would still take a backseat to his studies, but at least this time around, he doesn't completely soften up by the time the Boo Saga rolls around. Going forward, Gohan's relationship with 16 would grow and become much stronger than anybody else's, something that would have been impossible in the main timeline. So no matter how you picture it, or whatever kind of adventures these two go on between the Cell and Boo Sagas, Gohan's friendship with Android 16 is what defines 16's character moving forward. As we'll see soon enough, 16's natural loyalty and devotion to protecting others will be something that leads him into battle against stronger opponents more dangerous than even Cell. But when these new bad guys arrive, what are their plans for Earth now that Goku isn't around to defend it? How will Android 16 change the world of Dragon Ball as a newfound ally to Gohan and his friends? What has Goku been doing in Otherworld all this time? All of these questions will be answered in the next part of this What If story, so if you enjoyed this first part, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Dragon Ball content like this. Leave your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments below, and if you want to be notified when part 2 of this story drops, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Until then, I'm Innovative JDog, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I will be seeing all of you Dragon Ball fans later. See ya!